Okay, thanks. All right, I think we're on. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I just got off the phone with uh, with Ian Rankin over at Central. Um, for some reason, it was log locking me out. Um, all I could see was my frozen face, and that's not good for anyone. So anyway, um, hope you're able to join me here for a little bit. I do apologize about my tardiness. Um, we had some technical difficulties this morning. All right. Well, hey, my name's Tom, and uh, I am a member and elder at Central and always love it when it works out in my schedule and when uh, Jeff asked me to, to lead in prayer. So so thanks for joining me this morning. Um, if you stuck around and waited an extra seven minutes uh, to join me, thank you. Or if you're joining me later, I uh, appreciate uh, the time that we get to spend together here in prayer uh, on Wednesday morning. What is it? April 26th. Man, this year is already approaching May, um, which uh, it's Wednesday, and so what that means is on Wednesday nights, uh, there is usually five to 600, up to even maybe 700 teenagers that come to the Southwest campus at Central. And uh, we come together for corporate worship, we come for, together for teaching, and then we come uh, to, uh, to connect with one another. We, we have students in life groups and leaders. And personally, this is such a, a powerful time. Uh, one of the things I love about our church is that we invest heavily in the next generation. It's one of our three main initiatives is investing in this next generation, next gen, gen and 10. And, uh, and so uh, we just invest a lot of time, energy, dollars into reaching teenagers and young adults uh, for Christ. And I love that. Uh, for the first 20 years of my ministry, that's what I was focused on, was reaching students. And for the last 10 years, I've actually been a life group leader. And so I've been leading a group of teens on Wednesday nights for the last 10 years at Central. Uh, started back when my uh, youngest son, or excuse me, my oldest son, Isaiah, came into the youth group at sixth grade. And uh, and now I will complete uh, going, and I went back down when Chase became uh, a teenager and so I could track with him. And because I guess I was a glutton for punishment, I wanted to work with those sixth through eighth graders again, those wily little dudes, um, but, but uh, tracked with them. And so now I've got a group of graduating seniors and and uh, so one of the things that, uh, that I've consistently just prayed for, uh, for, for our students, is that they would consistently desire to grow specifically in two areas. Uh, number one, in their desire to be conformed into the likeness of Christ. Because as we all know, the more that we become like Jesus, um, you know, for us as adults, the better husbands will be, the more engaged dads will be, um, the, the better leaders will be in our community, the more Christ-like characteristics that will, that, that will they will naturally flow out of us. And that's what I've been praying for our teenagers, because that helps them uh, just understand who they are, uh, helps them in their decision making, all those kinds of things. And which leads me to the second thing that I've, that I've uh, just consistently prayed for teenagers is that they would desire to grow in their wisdom to grow in, in their knowledge and their experience and their understanding in the ways of God that would lead them to having good judgment and to make godly decisions. You know, wisdom is mentioned a ton in scripture, especially in the book of Proverbs. And uh, as you know, the, the majority of the book of, uh, the book of Proverbs was written uh, by King Solomon. And, you know, Solomon, the thing I love about him is, I mean, there's a lot to love about the dude, but, but, but the, th the, th the thing that I just respect is that when, when he was, when he came into rulership in Israel, you know, um, it was most like the upper teens, lower twenties, let's call it at, at around the age of 20. Um, you know, God came to him in a dream and said, Solomon, what is it that you want? What is it that you need? And uh, Solomon could have asked for anything, but he, what he asked for was he asked for wisdom. And he asked for discernment of how he could lead God's people. And so I want to look uh, this morning at a couple of, of Proverbs, uh, excerpts out of Proverbs. And then, and then we're going to pray. We're going to, we're going to pray uh, specifically for wisdom this morning. Wisdom for our students and wisdom for ourselves. That we would seek the Lord and his wisdom in the decisions and in the moment-by-moment moment, uh just things that we have to do throughout the day. And so this is what it says. This is one of my, my favorites out of, out of uh, Proverbs chapter 2. Uh, this is what it says. I'm going to read two different Proverbs this morning. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, 
Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it, get this, if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. So if we search, if we if we yearn, if we long for wisdom, to say that we would for a pay raise or any kind of a promotion at work or or you know affirmation from others or whatever, if we would seek wisdom, then uh, Solomon says, then you will understand the fear or the reverence, the awe of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. Now, success, not necessarily in the world's eyes, okay, but success in God's eyes. Um, he holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair every good path for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you and the second uh, proverb is uh, my wife's life verse it's been her life verse for ever since she came to the lord i really entrusted uh her life to him in her early 20s uh it it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Many of you know this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Okay, not just in the easy ways, not just in just in the some that we some of the ways we feel comfortable in, but in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. And so this morning, what I want us to do here. Uh, and I appreciate you, you know, sticking with me as we're going to be on just a, a couple minutes longer here. Um, but I just want us to pray for wisdom. I want us to pray for, for the wisdom, the knowledge to experience God, specifically for our teenagers. Okay, we're going to gather for the last time in a large group setting tonight. Where Yes, we're going to gather next week again uh, just for kind of a, a short time of, of worship. The seniors are going to um, celebrate kind of, you know, the culmination of their youth group years, talk about where they're going to be heading, and then they're going to go off for a senior celebration. And then the rest of the life groups are going to get together um, on their own and just celebrate what God has done in their lives. But this is our last corporate time together here tonight for youth group at Central Church. And so I just want to pray for our students to have wisdom as they head into summer, as they head into, uh, you know, into college, into just do their summer jobs, all those kinds of things that they would desire to grow in their wisdom, making good choices that they would allow God to guide them in their decision making. And then secondly, I want us to pray that same thing for us. You know, as parents, as, as grandparents, as as community leaders, as business leaders, as friends, that that we would desire wisdom, that would that we would search after wisdom, like it said in Proverbs too, that we would search after wisdom with the same passion, with the same fervor that we would like silver or a hidden treasure. All right, so let's let's uh, join our hearts and our minds together this morning, uh, and just ask the Lord for wisdom for our students, and for anything that we may uh, come across today. So let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you uh, for, for your scripture, first of all. God, I thank you that, that from your word comes wisdom, comes knowledge, comes understanding. And God, this morning, we pray specifically for those things for our students. God, it has been amazing to watch you bring students from, from age you know, 12 years old to 18 years old over the course of this year, 400, 500, sometimes over 600 students gathering on purpose on a Wednesday night to worship you, to dig into your word, to talk about real life stuff and what it looks like to live out their faith in the middle school or high school setting, in the, in the hallways, in their biology classes, in their practices after school for their athletics, in their part-time jobs, whatever it is, God, they're gathering on Wednesday night. They've set aside that time to seek you. God, we pray that as, as our our time of just regular interaction together as students and leaders comes to, to an end over the next couple of weeks and students are going off in, into whatever the summer has for them. For some, this is they're going to be their final youth group gathering ever. And so they're going to be heading off and, and moving into uh, the, the, the college years. And God, we know we're going to continue to pour into them as college students, as a church, and as individuals. But God, we pray for them individually that you would just give those graduating seniors wisdom. 
God, that you would help guide them as some of them are still trying to make college decisions or figure out what they're going to do this coming fall. God, I pray that you give them wisdom in, in how to make the finances work that you give wisdom in, in their dating relationships. Many of them are, are in dating relationships. They're thinking ahead to those dating relationships. But God, would you give them wisdom? Would you give them a desire to date in a godly way? That you would help them set up godly boundaries. That, that really, that they would understand that that is for their good, for, the, for their relationship's good. God, we pray that you would give them wisdom in their everyday decision making. God, we recognize that that a lot of times we maybe we go to you uh, during the big decisions, during things that, man, we really just don't know what to do. We think about just Solomon when, in, when you came to him in the dream and he was feeling a little bit over his skis and figuring out, man, I don't know that I have everything that it takes to lead the, country, the, 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 the nation of Israel. But God, he was so wise and he said, God, give me your wisdom, give me your discernment, give me your knowledge so that I can live this life and I can lead the way that you desire me to lead. God, that, that is what we pray for our teenagers. God, we pray for students uh, on the whole, God, mental health. So many students are dealing with pressures at home, at school. Uh, they're, they're trying to fit in. They're trying to figure out who they are. God, would you just, through the power of your Holy Spirit, encourage them today to understand the, the, the person that you created them to be, that they are a masterpiece, as your word says. God, I pray that, that if, they have, if they have any kind of feelings that are weighing them down of how they have to measure up or things that they have to do to fit, fit in, God, would you just give them confidence in you that they really can be created that they, they really can be who you created them to be. God, um, we pray the, um, for wisdom for, for us as parents. As we've been praying these things for, for students, we know that there are many here praying right now together. And many are going to be praying throughout the day. But um, sometimes we, as adults, man, we have feelings that we have to measure up. Or that we have to, that we have to do things uh, to, to be approved whether that be by you or by others. God, we have decisions that we need to make in, in business, in our marriages, in our parenting, so many other areas. God, would you just, would you help us through the power of your Holy Spirit seek your wisdom? Sometimes, if we're honest, God, uh, we can try to get by on our talent. We can try to get by on, on what we know. And we don't bring the, those decisions to you, no matter how great or small they may be. But God, would we desire your knowledge, your wisdom above anything else? God, we want, we want to experience you. We want to recognize your presence. You know, the, the whole idea of wisdom is, is understanding just the, you know, things from your point of view. To experience you in a, in a real and a tangible and in a in a in a moment by moment way, and that's what we pray. Not just for our teenagers, but we pray that for us today, God, that we would look for you uh, to lead us each step of the way as we have conversations. We know, Lord, that that you have specifically placed us in workplaces today. You've placed us in with opportunities. May we seize those opportunities as you give them to us. Uh, to, to walk in faith and, and to share even some of the, the wisdom and the knowledge that you've shared with us. Would we share that boldly with other people? God, we want to, we want to move forward today in, in the power and the purpose and the plan that you have for our lives. We know that, uh, that the scripture talks about walking in the fear of you, in reverence of you, in awe of you, in a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And why? Because you're, another Proverbs talks about how the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. God, we want, we want to live that way in awe of you that will help us continue to grow in our knowledge and understanding of the things that you want to do in our lives as well as through our lives. God, we pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will remind our students today continually as they're finishing up their schoolwork over the next several weeks, and that you would remind us as well, again, through the power of your Holy Spirit, to run after your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, instead of running after the ways of the world. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We pray that this, this prayer, this, this desire for wisdom, 
would not be confined just to this prayer time, but that it would that it would really guide our hearts and thoughts and lead us into whatever you have for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you again. Thank you for uh, for hanging with me. Sorry about the technical difficulties at the front end of our time together, but do pray that it's a wonderful Wednesday for you. That you, you know, that uh, that the rest of this week is one that you feel the presence of the Lord and that He gives you great wisdom and knowledge and understanding as you make decisions, both big and small. And uh, continue to pray for our students as they finish out this school year. And we gather for just a couple more times here uh, before we end our uh, our, our uh, school year season of youth ministry at Central. So God bless you, and uh, we'll see you soon.